Well, here we go again. I'm out in the garage and it's this time the garage has turned into a body shop. Before, we've had all kinds of dust from dirt, from sanding grimy, oily stuff down, and now we're down to dust from paint and Bondo. I know I hate the Bondo as much as you do, but this tub needs a little of it to smooth things out. So I've pretty much got the passenger side done. We got that done last go around. I'm gonna walk you around on the driver's side now and show you what the situation looks like over here as we get working on getting this side tuned up. So come on along, let's go have a look at what it looks like on the other side. All right, well, here we are on the driver's side of the tub, and I've just done a, just a mild sand with some 400 grit to take off the top <clears throat> primer from before. And doing this really just pulls out these low spots. Here's the high spots. Um, so you can see, as we come all the way down the side here, this thing is probably gonna need as much attention as the passenger side did. So especially, let me grab the other light here. This area right here is a little disappointing because it really looks like it's kind of really folded there. Obviously, I, I mean, I get that, but I can, I can just run my hand across that and feel, you know, low spot, high spot, low spot, like a divot right there. So that's gonna take a little it's going to take a fair amount of putty in there because I can't, I'm not a body guy. I don't know how to get back in there and really get that pounded out. So, and then of course you can see my marks all along the bottom here where the pen got spot welded to the sidewall here. And as we work our way up, again, more spot welds. Just everywhere you look, there's a low spot there by that one. On the other side of this is the bracket for the power, or the uh, parking brake bracket. And then, you know, I did sand across here and never touched that area with the sandpaper and obviously did touch that part. So about the same situation as we had on the other side, I don't think it's gonna be any less work and it might be, you might not have to come down, do this kind of skim out this whole section, although it's, there's a low spot where they bent that corner around. So mostly, Kind of a swath up here across the top. We'll come down here, we'll put a swath across the bottom. Up there, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but you, you sure can see it now that we've done a little sand and it, it sure brings out the difference in the, how smooth or not smooth it is. So I'm gonna get going on this, get a little filler on there so it can start to dry that first layer and then we'll continue on. All right, well, I thought I'd give you just a quick look at our first rough draft here of laying on our first layer of some putty. Filler, Bondo, that nasty stuff that nobody likes in bodywork. Uh, I do need to put a little back here around on the back, dress that little area there up, but all that we gotta do now is just let that dry for a bit and then start sanding and see how we do.
All right, well, I think I mentioned that I put myself through college, or maybe I didn't mention that, by doing drywall finishing. And one thing I learned by doing that was you gotta get the light going down the side of your wall, and then you can see what's really going on. So you can see here, any place that there's still the rough surface, that's a low spot. So the sanding makes it nice and smooth. These are low spots still. So we're a little bit low here, and then you can see my line where I cut in. It's didn't work very well there. What we do in drywall is you always come up, so you're sanding down your high spot. I didn't get that done here. Also, you can see any place that your edge is nice and irregular like that, you feathered it out nicely. Any place that you have a spot, like kind of you can see one here, you can see one here where the dark is dark and the line is pretty straight, that is not a good line. You're not done there because when that light shines down that, you're gonna see a line there. You can see another example of it here. Now I haven't sanded too much down here, but I still have a low spot here that I need to fill. And that line is very distinct. So there's nowhere near being done there. So as we look further down this thing, you can see across the top here, other than just up along the edge, which I might have to skim and and sand right along the edge there but I've got the little high spot showing through and nice feathered edge so I think that's pretty good shape right there and it feels nice and smooth when you're on your hand across it I get over to here I've got again some low spots where the little holes are still where the surface of this stuff was rough and then as we get down here to my bad spot um, you can see that I still got a fair amount of work to do here. I'm feathering into the edge here, but a low spot right there, a little high here, and then again, that was our big divot, and that's still showing as low. So I'm gonna bring another layer down here and feather it further out this way, but that's coming along. Okay, now the rest of the bottom here, I've got it feathered out pretty nicely, it looks okay. Um, a few little rough patches right along the bottom lip here. I may fill in and then I've tried to grind this down. Um, but again, you can see there's a distinct line right there, no feather to it. There's a feathered line, the difference versus that line. So this is not done, needs some more work. A lot of work necessary up here still to get this grinding area all straightened out and uh, along the front. So yeah, another pass with the Filler will be required on this, some of this, and other of it won't take too much more work because it's in pretty good shape. So that's what I learned from all those years of doing drywall. I think the concept is exactly the same. Hopefully I don't have some body shop guy just doing contortions out there watching me going, you're doing it wrong, you idiot. But I think the basic concept is still gonna apply. If you can see solid lines, if you can see rough patches where you're your filler is still got the surface imperfections, it's low there, and you need to add a little bit more, sand her down. So you build it up, sand it down, build it up and sand it down until you just wanna throw the thing away, and then you've just about got one more pass to do. <laughs> so that's where we're at. I'll come back in a while and show you how it looks after the next round. All right, so under the category of nearly done, I'll give you a shot of this which I didn't do the other time around on the other side. Um, still a little work to do right down here in this bottom corner of the dent there for the where the old gas filler went on the old CJs, CJ2s and stuff. I got to, um, I still got to just do a little more work there. And then I ran out of Bondo with the bucket I was using and so I opened an old can to try to finish up this area up here. And man, it was just, too old and it was stiff and so didn't get anything done there so I ran and got one more little can I'll finish up these last little few little spots but this is coming along nicely we're almost got this side done okay well I got some time to kill while I'm waiting for stuff to dry over there so I just want to show you why I'm kind of jazzed about getting the new steering column in here so this is the new steering column that I got and you can see what we've got here is we've got a U-joint on both ends of this thing. So this is the smaller end that goes down on the actual power steering box. This is the bigger end that goes up and connects to the rest of the steering column. It's got all the wiring in it and, and ultimately connects to the steering wheel. 
So set screws to lock it onto the spline shafts. Here we go. Basically a U-joint on each end. And now let's have a look at the factory original one from 1977. So at the top end, we have kind of a U-joint affair. It's not really a U-joint in there. It's more like a block with some pins that can, can flex a little bit. But here's the part that I've always thought was just crazy. This is the bottom end. So what they did is they basically just put this pin through the shaft and then this cup affair goes on to the power steering box. So the shaft then just goes inside of the cup and that's your connection point down at the bottom. Now, it's not that it's weak. Here's the problem with it. There's a, you know, there's an eighth to a sixteenth of a, of a turn in play there before that box, that, that pin kind of bangs up against the side, one side or the other of the cup. So, you know, that translates into, I don't know, a sixteenth of a turn of your steering wheel before anything really starts to happen. So, you know, you take that and you take, you know, lifted suspension and bigger tires, tracing stuff on the road. It all just contributes to these things not steering very well and combine that with the short wheelbase, you know, so everything's kind of happening quickly. So I won't be sorry to throw that thing in the trash and replace it with this new fixed unit that has no slop. So we basically just will be taking, you know, a, an eighth of a turn or a sixteenth of a turn at least in play out of the steering system. And then when you combine that with my heavy duty bracket that I put on the side of the steering box down there and that bracket that goes around the bottom where the pitman arm comes out and connects over to the frame, there just shouldn't be any movement down there. So the steering wheel, when I move the steering wheel, I should be moving the wheels and it should be, should steer better. So glad to have that here finally. The, um, New heavy duty tie rod and drag link, I think, are finally shipping from Quadratech. I think they finally got stock on those. So, once we get done making this mess with paint and bondo and, and dust and all that, we'll be able to start getting back on the front end and getting that thing buttoned up. So, just wanted to show you that. I'm a little excited to have that thing here. I sure think it's going to do a lot better job of helping me steer this thing. So, I'll get back over to my bodywork and see you in a bit. All right, well, I thought I'd give you just a quick wrap up here. I'm about done with the primer and the, the putty and the prep, of the body, the tub on both the driver's side and the passenger side. So let's have a quick look. Um, I did notice one line right here, and I don't know how well the camera will pick that up, but depending on how the light hits it, there's a spot there where I did not feather my Bondo out. So we've got to sand that down a little bit. But other than that, I think this turned out pretty darn good. Um, everything looks nice and smooth. We don't see any of those nasty spot weld holes. And um, as we glance down this thing, I think it's going to look okay with paint on it. There was a low spot right kind of here where they spot welded the fender to the back. Got that all smoothed out. Ditto over on this side and as we peer down the passenger side. Again, we can see if we get really up here and get the light going up and down this thing, we got no low divot points and so forth. So we still got a couple of issues that I don't like with that primer. I might strap on a piece of 1500 grit on a block or something and give a little more sanding just to kind of finish off that, that primer prep. But for the most part, we're gonna call it good and um, the next time we do anything on these sides, we'll be getting them painted. So what's left to do, what's next to do, I guess, on the list would be to kind of maybe do that firewall paint on the inside of the firewall and the inside of the fenders. And then that, I'll be done with that area. And um, then I can get on, hopefully I'll get my front suspension parts that I'm waiting on and get the front end put back together. So I think I'm gonna wrap this up for now. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was informative or helpful or you just think I'm crazy with all this body work, but it's done and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So let me know if you, again, if you're a bodywork guy and I was making you do backflips with 
doing things wrong, drop me a comment, man. Let me know what I did wrong there. But uh, I think it turned out okay. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time around.